Hey, use code Bengal at sign up on FanDuel. You get a free $20 to play with. Also, check out my links down in the description for Twitter, Twitch, second and third channels for all different types of content that you might enjoy. So be sure to check it out and let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video. And uh, I know some people have probably already skipped past this, but for those who haven't, I got a disclaimer for you. Uh, we can laugh at the guys in the comments that skip past. It's going to be an absolute disaster of a mock draft. I'm telling you. You're going to see on the screen in a minute, this is a disaster. I get that, okay? Uh, it, I did a bunch of trades. I tried to make this go off the wall. So we have a lot of players rising, a lot of players falling, like, out falling way off way down the board um a lot of teams trading up making ridiculous picks so i think this was kind of a fun one this is not what my usual mock drafts will look like so i'm gonna hopefully have one coming out every week subscribe if you're not already this is a disaster i'm letting you know just take this as more of like a fun one than a, what might actually happen but this is a world where crazy trades go down let's start off with number one I got the Jags trading up to number one. This is Arizona's selection. They take Dwayne Haskins. I'm not going to be going over each detail uh, of the trade. You guys can kind of, you know, make believe whatever you guys want about that, whatever y'all want to do. But bottom line is the Jags need a quarterback. They have the roster around them. They have a decent offensive line. A lot of guys are coming back healthy, like Brandon Linder. Like they're starting left and right tackles in Cam Robinson, Jeremy Parnell. They're going to be having a much healthier unit. Andrew Norwell at left guard. This could be a way better offensive line. We already know they have the defense. Got to focus on wide receiver maybe a little bit later. If they even have a second round pick now that we're trading it away. But there will be some decent receivers in the third round. Bottom line for me here is a franchise quarterback could take the Jaguars back to the playoffs and potentially make a deep run. They go Dwayne Haskins at number one. 49ers now with their dream player on the board. They need edge help so badly and arguably the best player in the draft is available at number two they're gonna take nick bosa number three it's the miami dolphins i'm sorry i'm sorry dolphins fans but this is a situation where this team has a terrible ownership and management and they're gonna get pressured into reaching down the board trying to take a splash player with a really high ceiling in kyler murray and they're gonna try to take their quarterback of the future kyler murray to the miami dolphins Next up, Broncos also trading up for a quarterback. That was a Jets pick at number three. This is the Raiders pick. Drew Locke. Quarterbacks are flying off the board. Denver does not want to risk a team way in front of them like the Giants, like the Bucks, like any of these teams, maybe even the Redskins trading up, which could happen a little bit later. They don't want to risk it. They want to move up for their quarterback, and they're doing just that. Drew Locke is the pick here at number four. And now the Bucks who are happy Jonah Williams is on the board. Jets didn't take him. They traded back. You have your potential offensive tackle uh, or guard of the future. Versatile player could do both. Jonah Williams to the Bucks at number five. Giants, who desperately need ed help, uh, edge help. Their ideal quarterback probably off the board with no Murray, no Locke, no Haskins. The Giants are also a team that could trade up for a QB. But in this instance, we're going Cleveland Furl. They need edge help so, so badly. I know some people have talked about uh, they need to focus on the inside of the D-line. Well, they they have good interior. Dalvin Tomlinson played a lot of uh, nose tackle this last year. He was phenomenal in the wake of Damon Harrison being traded for a fifth-round draft pick. I still can't get over that. B.J. Hill was solid. Maybe you could use uh, another 3-4 defensive end, but Mario Edwards played that role pretty well. Josh Morrow was terrible, but you might re-sign him. So Cleveland Furl is a great option as an edge rusher don't know what you're going to do with olivier vernon just yet don't really have a solid option as a three down player on the other side lorenzo carter's rotational hit or miss so cleveland furl here comes in starts immediately can be a real wreaker of havoc number seven the cardinals who moved down obviously from number one this is the jags pick and they take an offensive lineman help protect their franchise quarterback not kyler murray cliff kingsbury is not taking kyler murray number one overall they help protect their actual franchise quarterback, Josh Rosen, with Greg Little, offensive tackle out of Ole Miss. And the last pick of this slide is going to be the Lions, who go with Devin White. Good linebacker. Probably doesn't translate well to be a 4-3 inside linebacker, in my opinion. I think he translates more as a Willer or Sam, but he's very versatile. 
in terms of ability to go after the passer. And he's a real athlete. Really special player, potentially. Just has to work on shedding his blocks, being more of a thumper on the inside. But the Lions take Devin White, get somebody good next to Gerard Davis, or Jared Davis, and uh, he helps them out significantly. Number 9 to 16, we have another trade up, and that is the Washington Redskins. This is the Bills pick. They're going to take Daniel Jones. They're going to move ahead. They don't want the Bengals to take a QB. They don't want the Raiders. they got to move up. And they're taking Daniel Jones, quarterback out of Duke. You know, D Daniel Jones is an interesting player. I think the bottom line here is that the Redskins uh, need a quarterback. Alex Smith may never play a down of football in the NFL again. So it does make sense for the Redskins to move up to take that franchise quarterback. So even though I don't think there are, you know, four or five franchise-level first-round talent quarterbacks in the first round, by you know, I, I don't think that at all. Here we are. It's a ninth pick. I told you it was going to be absolute pandemonium and wildness. It just it's not it's not going to happen, I don't think. But the Redskins move up for a quarterback. They take Daniel Jones. Uh, again, it's it's crazy to me. Haskins one, Murray three, Lock four, uh, and, and now Daniel Jones at nine. It's just quarterbacks for days. This is the fourth one. But the Redskins get their uh, potential franchise signal call, uh, signal caller. Number 10, the Raiders on the board. This was the Broncos pick. They go Quinn and Williams. Who would have expected that Quinn and Williams, who had such a breakout season for the Alabama Crimson Tide, would fall all the way to 10, one of the best players in this entire draft? Well, guess what? The teams up closer to the top, they don't really need defensive line on the inside as much as they do uh, you know, other positions. So here we have one of the best players in the draft falling to the Raiders at 10 who traded back. We've seen good defensive tackles, good interior defensive linemen fall before. Everyone thought Leonard Williams was going to be the first pick in his draft. He fell to five. This is a little bit more of an interesting situation because I don't think anyone thinks Quinn Williams is going to go one. Maybe. But uh, he's more of a, a two to six guy, and, and here he is falling to ten. Pretty good value for the Raiders. As the Bengals go, an offensive tackle. Got to beat, uh, you know, protect Andy Dalton. Beat some of these edge rushers flying in. And Jawan Taylor probably fits the bill. A guy that played right tackle at Florida could come in and play him immediately. Would work out really nice for those bungles. Montez Sweat to the Green Bay Packers who desperately need edge help. You got Nick Perry and Clay Matthews both uh, potentially leaving as well as being older players. You got to go with an edge rusher somewhere in the first round. You have two first round picks. You have the Saints pick, which is at, uh, what, number 30. We'll get to that a little bit later. As the Jets take an edge rusher, Ja'Kai Polite out of Florida. I know, this is an interesting one. It is. Ja'Kai Polite is a good player. Not a great player, in my opinion. Things could change. But uh, right now, I think Ja'Kai Polite probably slots somewhere in this area. We're not going Josh Allen just yet. As, uh, as the Falcons take Ed Oliver, another player that's falling all over the place. He's available at number 14. Greedy Williams goes to the Bills. They take maybe their uh, franchise CB duo, both from LSU with Greedy Williams and Tredavious White as the Panthers once again go Deontay Thompson. I've kept this pick pretty static. They don't really have a starting safety. So Deontay Thompson makes a ton of sense here at 16. All right, 17 to 24 now. Got the Browns going with one of the best players in the entire draft available here at 17. A lot of the defensive tackles have fallen. Jeffrey Simmons is one of them. I think this guy is someone that can play 3-4 defensive end as well. Really, really good inside uh, defensive lineman. Beast, exactly what the Browns need. A game changer on the inside. Jeffrey Simmons can be exactly that. Vikings go Dalton Risner. This one makes a lot of sense to me. And then I know I'm going to get a lot of hate over this one. This is kind of a wild one. This is one of the big drops I talked about. Josh Allen. Outside linebacker, Kentucky goes to the Tennessee Titans, and here's why. I know a lot of people have seen the hype about Josh Allen as a top five player, uh, and for what it's worth, many of you who are unfamiliar with the channel won't value this, but you know, upon real tape study of Josh Allen, he's not really an edge rusher. His ideal setup is probably as a hybrid outside linebacker that occasionally rushes the passer. He doesn't have great hands as a pass rusher, and he wins a lot due to circumstance and, and with having a high motor 
and working to get there. He doesn't really have an array of pass rush moves that he goes to consistently. And for me, he's an inconsistent pass rusher. And uh, his numbers don't reflect that. I think sacks are a really stupid thing to determine value for a college player because Jalen Ferguson is another guy with a high sack total out of Louisiana Tech, the highest ever. And uh, really don't see him as, as a first-round guy at all. I know he's been getting some hype there as well. So I could easily see Josh Allen falling here to 19. I think he's a versatile player and a good one, but I don't think he's a super elite player in any one area. So for that reason, he falls to 19. DeAndre Baker to the Pittsburgh Steelers here. Makes a ton of sense. Of course, their cornerbacks have been already burned all year. And DeAndre Baker hopefully comes in and helps out that secondary. Nasir Adderley, an FCS player, going in the first round. We've seen it with Carson Wentz most recently, as far as I know. And Nasir Adderley is the next one. A safety has been an absolute monster has everything you'd look for in a free safety and this is your earl thomas replacement i think he's a comparable player to earl thomas if you saw my prospect breakdown of him love nasir adderley love what he brings to the table he is a tremendous talent and i would not be shocked if i hear his name in the first round josh jacobs at number 22 i think the ravens had a running game that got better in the second half of the season i'm not sure that gus edwards is their answer at running back and certainly no one else would be uh buck allen is terrible and ty montgomery is a free agent at the end of this year so or is a, i guess a free agent now pretty much josh jacobs is an absolute monster first round caliber player for sure and this is where we're seeing the first running back go number 22 as the texans go offensive line cody ford out of oklahoma he stays in the area somewhat and uh, it's not far. Oklahoma's touching Texas. Houston's like a, maybe a six-hour drive from from uh, the Oklahoma campus. I, I can't say that for a fact. Probably somewhere in that range. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that the Texans' offensive line, not fantastic. Cody Ford, a versatile offensive lineman that can play right tackle, as he did for Oklahoma, but probably profiles more as an offensive guard in the NFL. But, hey, man, try him at tackle. See if he gets most of his value there. Move him inside. He's a good offensive lineman. I think it's the bottom line. As Nikhil Harry rounds out the top 24 to the Oakland Raiders. A good receiver. Fantastic jump ball guy who's explosive after the catch. One thing I worry about him, though, is uh, getting off breaks and, and winning against the press. I don't. He doesn't have elite speed or release off the break. It's kind of weird. But really, really fun player to watch as uh, he gets a weapon. John Gruden does in Oakland eventually Las Vegas, Nikhil Harry, beast out of Arizona State. And then rounding out the top 32, we got the Eagles going Byron Murphy, cornerback out of Washington. I really do think they need help at cornerback. You saw Rasul Douglas uh, play all right, and then Avante Maddox just got absolutely exposed in the playoffs. I know Ronald Darby's coming back, but a star cornerback definitely couldn't hurt. Byron Murphy, a uh, decent value here at number 25. I think the, the Eagles would be foolish to pass it up. I know Sidney Jones as well. A lot of injury concerns with this team. I don't think Rasul Douglas or Avante Maddox are starting caliber cornerbacks. Byron Murphy helps you out a lot. I could also see them going edge here as the Colts go DK Metcalf. Beast out of Ole Miss. The sample size is really low. He's been injured, hasn't played all that much at Ole Miss, but he's explosive. He's a guy that can really, really help out in offense. And Andrew Luck gets a pure number one weapon. I like T.Y. Hilton, and he's good on the outside, but he needs some help. DK Metcalf really would be quite an addition to that offense as Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, versatile defensive back for the Florida Gators, goes to the Oakland Raiders. Could play safety, probably his best fit, also corner, boundary, nickel corner. Uh, interesting fit there as uh, the Raiders go defense for the second time, I believe. Rashawn Gary, he falls all the way to 28, but he goes to a really good defensive line. I don't think he's an edge rusher. I know a lot of people call him an edge rusher. I think he profiles more as an interior defensive lineman, and that's exactly what the Los Angeles Chargers need, an interior defensive lineman to go with their sick edge rushers in Joey Bosa, in Melvin Ingram. Welcome Rashawn Gary to LA. As the Packers go, A.J. Brown, one of my favorite players in the draft. I think he's a really, really good player, and he falls all the way to 29 as Aaron Rodgers gets a sick weapon to add to Devontae Adams. Could also see them going tight end here. Jonathan Abram goes to the Chiefs. 
bottom line here is Eric Berry is at this point an in, in injury prone safety. I know the camps are terrible, terrible. And then he's had the heel thing all this year. Awful situation. And this really isn't an Eric Berry replacement necessarily, but it's another body out there. They don't have great safety play. I know Daniel Sorensen had a pick uh, tonight as I record this, but they need to improve at safety. They need to improve at safety badly. Ron Parker's a guy that benched, and Eric Berry, if I'm not mistaken, is getting up near 30 as he is 30 years old, just turned 30 uh, in December. So another safety could be just what the doctor ordered in Kansas City to take them hopefully to the Super Bowl this time for Chiefs fans. Could also see them going linebacker. Could also see them going cornerback here. Could also see them going defensive line. Anything on defense. Jonathan Abrams seems like good value for the spot, though, as Mac Wilson goes to the Rams. Could see the Chiefs taking this guy. But I think here, he falls to the Rams. Chiefs go a different direction. And uh, the Rams need linebacker help badly. They need athleticism to work with tight ends. Mac Wilson is a very good player. Good tackler. Good cover ability as well. Maybe not the fastest linebacker, but he's very instinctive in coverage and makes a ton of plays. As the Patriots, who of course we have winning the Super Bowl in this one, take Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle out of Clemson, can play really all over the defensive line. Really, really good player. And the Patriots snag just another stud. Christian Wilkins rounds out this mock draft. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I know it was an abomination in some regards. I know some of the guys who didn't listen to the intro in the comments section will be going wild, but this was a fun one. I think it was wild. I think it was interesting. I've tried to make this a lot shorter for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed regardless, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Yeah.